Now Today is presented by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. The Tampa Bay Bucks, winners of four straight, Michael Pittman, Michael Allstadt coming out there at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa as Cleveland comes to town. McCardell, what a difference he's made this year. And uh, that Tampa Bay offense, people say it's not living up to that defense, but, you know, that defense has scored four touchdowns this year, Dan. It has scored four touchdowns for Keyshawn Johnson. Derek Brooks actually scored a lot more touchdowns than you have in the last two years. So we're not talking about it. rings or nothing else. <laughs> Gruden, actually, like I said earlier, they're playing to their strengths. Their strengths is defense and special teams. they got to continue to do that. Hey, Carl Williams averaging almost 12 yards per punt return. Uh, this could be a factor in the game. This guy could pop one today. Hey, you know, that uh, Tampa Bay defense has as many touchdowns as the Cincinnati defense. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? I have four my each. Cincinnati helmet here. They are going to win today. I guarantee it so much that he's going to be wearing my jersey. Did you accept bet. that? That, that, that thing is making pick, me itch. Bet. Did you accept the bet? No response. Yeah, he did. How about my bling bling, man? How about Enjoy my the bling bling? Right here on CBS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bling bling. <laughs> here. Here in Tampa, everything's high, high humidity, high temperature, high hopes as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, four consecutive wins, take on the Cleveland Browns. And this defense for Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers have found the touchdown treasure chest. Well, great defense in, in this town, Dick, is nothing new, but boy, have they gotten off to a fabulous start, led by Derek Brooks. Already four interceptions on the season, and three times already, he's returned them into the end zone for touchdown. And of course, always, it starts up front with Warren Sapp, the most active and probably, Dick, the loudest defensive tackle in football. And for the Cleveland Browns, our quarterback, Tim Couch, angrily challenged the Cleveland fans last week, has a chance to prove his point today against one of the toughest defenses in the entire NFL. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. You know, I've laid it on the line for this this team in this city, and for them to turn on me and boo me in my home stadium is is a, is a joke. Cleveland's Tim Couch, injured in his own end zone, heard derisive cheers from his own fans. In Tampa today, number two remains number one. Backup Kelly Holcomb is injured. So supported by his coaches and teammates, Couch's critical test today is against the NFL's meanest defense. The Buccaneers have manhandled four consecutive opponents, four straight wins. New head coach John Gruden's offensive promise has been upstaged by a touchdown parade on defense. The Bucks and Browns are next. The Cleveland Browns aim to end the four-game winning streak of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Keyshawn Johnson has a new wide receiver teammate, Keenan McCardell. That makes Keyshawn less of a wanted man, and that makes Keyshawn happy. Cleveland will take the kickoff, but first down to Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Dick Butch Davis said he played part coach, part shrink for Tim Couch this week, but he said, I really think my quarterback is developing that I'll show you mentality. Couch, that concussion last week, the third of his football career, so for the first time ever, he will wear a custom-made mouthpiece on his bottom teeth. Couch, well aware his starting center today, by the way, is a rookie. Melvin Fowler facing that defensive line featuring Warren Sapp for the Bucks, and of course, linebacker Derek Brooks, who said, you know what? We definitely plan on adding to Tim Couch's problems, Dick. All right, Bonnie. It is the test for Couch, but uh, Butch Davis said he thinks he's got a tougher quarterback through the experiences of this past week. He said he's had four years. You're coddled as a high school, a collegiate, even a pro a starter. You finally have one of those days where the fans get on your back. How well can you handle it? Well, Cleveland will get the ball first. We'll see Couch. Gramatica, Martin Gramatica to the end zone, and Andre Davis, the rookie from Virginia Tech, takes it out to the 20, maybe 22-yard line before he's toppled by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, led by Jack Golden. Tim Couch played his college ball at Kentucky, the first player selected in the 99 draft, and uh, his numbers this season, 64.8%, but only four touchdown passes. They want more production in that regard from him, and there are his numbers last week when he uh, accepted uh, very in a very difficult manner the uh, 
the boos and the cheers. It wasn't the boos that got him. It was the cheers when he was injured. Well, I, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. He, he'd been suffering from a concussion. He was knocked out of the game. Uh, imagine the feelings running through a, a concussed head in, in the locker room. I, I think you got to forgive him for just about anything he had to say. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. Jamel White is the running back. And he gets only a couple yards into the arms of Shelton Quarles, the middle linebacker of these Buccaneers. And here's the starting lineup for Couch and the Cleveland Browns. Up front, it's Verba and Stokes. Melvin Fowler, his first National Football League start. O'Hara and Tucker completes the offensive line. You just saw Jamel White, the second-year running back from South Dakota. Morgan and Johnson, the wideouts. Mark Campbell and Aaron Shea, two tight ends, although Shea really is an H-back. William Green, the number one draft pick of the Browns. Number 31 now, the tailback behind Couch on second down and eight. Underneath him, complete right through the hands of Aaron Shea. He was wide open. So third down and long for Couch, and here are the Buccaneers. They'll dig in on that third and long. Spires, the amazing Warren Sapp. McFarland may be almost as good, and Simeon Rice is a big playmaker. Singleton, Quarles, and Brooks. Three touchdowns with interceptions this year for Brooks. Kelly and Barber on the outside. Jackson and Lynch. Lynch with a bad knee. Does start at safety. Jamel White back in with Couch in the shotgun. Third and long. Down the middle. Complete. And a first down at the 36-yard line. As Couch really drilled that one into the center of the defense to Dennis Northcutt. Well, if anything, this is exactly what Tim Couch needed on the very first possession of the game, was to receive good protection. Look at his vision downfield. Dennis, Dennis Northcutt just hooks, stops, and look at that. Couch delivers a spiral right to him. That was uh, well done by all 11 members of the Browns' offensive unit. First down at the 37. With Shea in motion and then the give to William Green. They're hoping this kid from Boston College will get on track. He's averaging only 2.2 yards a carry, but offers great promise. Well, you can't do a Tampa Bay game without wanting to watch number 99, Warren Sapp. There he is right in the middle of your screen, working to the inside against Ryan Tucker. But it's the reaction. It's the way he's able to separate himself from a blocker. Warren Sapp rides the blocker, looks at the ball carrier, and when he chooses, he discards the blocker and works his way back to make the tackle. That's the way it's supposed to be done. Second and eight with William Green in the backfield and on a delay, Green tries to get outside and is tackled at the 41 by Derrick Brooks. It'll be third down and six. Well, if there's an issue with the Cleveland Browns, Dick, it's to somehow get William Green to bust loose. When, when you run the ball 44 times as he has coming into this game and you haven't yet cracked the century mark, that, that's a woeful 2.2 yards per carry average. Somehow from a confidence standpoint, for a feeling that yes, I really do deserve to be in the NFL, the guy needs to really bust loose. And the Browns and their fans hope it's today. Jamel White in the backfield now, counts under pressure. And he's going to have to throw it away. Closest was Jamel White, the running back. Simeon Rice applying the pressure. And that's where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been shining on. Third down. They have allowed only five of 32 third down conversions. Well, Simeon Rice is really pretty well blocked by Ryan Tucker. It's not until Tim Couch works his way out of the pocket to the right that he actually comes into the territory where Rice was. He just found nobody downfield. Credit to Buck secondary. Gardaki to kick. Carl Williams inside the Tampa Bay 20-yard line. What Beautiful. a ball spiral. <laughs> and it bounces into the end zone. And that will bring Tampa Bay out for their first offensive possession at the 20-yard line. 59 on the punt, 39 net for Gardaki. We're underway. In, as a player, I will tell you, the players are thankful that they're playing on a natural grass field because as you saw that thermometer hover near 100, it would have been 20 degrees higher if this was some sort of an artificial field. As the Buccaneers start from the 20, and Brad Johnson throws to Mike Allstock, the fullback for five yards on his first catch of the day. Dalen McCutcheon from the corner makes the tackle. Brad Johnson played here in the state at Florida State out of Black Mountain, North Carolina. And his numbers are just about his career numbers. He's nearly 62% lifetime. Last week in the Atlanta win, one touchdown, one interception. 
Yeah, when your defense is scoring all those touchdowns, you don't have to offer too much. Just protect the ball. Second and five. Michael Pittman, who played at Arizona for the past four years, is the tailback, and he gets the call. Staggers and falls forward to a first down at the 32-yard line. Grant Boyer down low to trip him up. Well, this offensive line now of Tampa Bay welcomes back Kenyatta Walker, the right tackle, and this goes right off right guard. And look at the surge there. Cozy Coleman, the right guard, Jeff Christie, the center, did an excellent job of blocking at the point of attack. But there's Kenyatta Walker there, number 67, their number one draft choice of a year ago, who had been bothered by an ankle for the last couple weeks. And on first down, they spread him out. Empty backfield behind Johnson. Under pressure, throws quickly to Pittman. Pittman breaks another tackle down the sidelines. Will they catch him? I don't think so. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Oh, they drag him down at the four-yard line. Finally, Devin Bush denied the touchdown after a 64-yard play. Well, it's a 64-yard play on a one-yard pass. Why? Because of the missed tackle right there by Dalen McCutcheon. A one-yard pass from Brad Johnson to Michael Pittman almost goes the distance. They say missed tackles are killing us. Well, that's exactly right. That's big plays and missed tackles have been haunting the Cleveland Browns, and there's a prime example. Pittman gets a breather. Mike Allstott now at the tailback. First and goal at the five. And it's Allstott up the middle. Pulling his way to the goal line. And no signal yet. Stop just shy of the touchdown. Devin Bush again down low to uh, not allow the score. Nick, how fitting is it that Mike Allstott from, from right outside the power football. Look at the body lean. Look at the shoulder pads. Look how low he gets him to the ground. You go to tackle Allstott. Look at this from right here. You're going to go tackle him. What do you see? The top of his helmet and the number four zero on the top of his shoulder pads. Earl Holmes gets in there, but boy, that's not much of a target. Second and goal. Guess who? Allstott. Diving, leaning, touchdown. You know, I've seen some leaps before. <laughs> And that's not one of the best. <laughs> he, get, he gets the big E for effective. <laughs> but uh, oh, Mike Allstott right there didn't exactly vertical leap about four feet into the end zone. <laughs> he didn't dunk, but he got in the hole. He scored. <laughs> so 6 nothing Tampa Bay on the semi-leap and long lean of the fullback Allstott. All set up by the Johnson to Pittman, 64-yard run and pass. Martine Gramatica. And the extra point. It's 7-0 on an 80-yard drive and five quick plays. And one of the most popular guys here in Tampa Bay, Mike, 65,000 sellout. And they get a chance to cheer early on the quick drive and the long run. 64 yards, the longest reception by uh, Pittman in his career. What's this uh, look by uh, Martin Gramatica here? He's wearing a pair of shorts and his knee socks pulled up his, over his knees. That's not a real attractive look, uh, but an effective kicker. <laughs> Andre Davis perhaps mesmerized by the new look from Gramatica lets it kick through the end zone for the touchback. Well, one more look at Mike Allstott. We've got a flag. We'll take a peek at what the flag is here first before we go back and look at the touchdown as Tom White and the, the crew huddle up. Called at the 15-yard line of Cleveland. Tom White, one of the most capable referees in the NFL, and as you can see, he's been doing it for a long time. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 38 on the receiving team. After the play was over, the penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal line. It'll be a first down for Cleveland. Well, Cleveland has no number 38 on their roster. There's the touchdown by Mike Alzot. He never does get into the end zone, but he's able to reach over. Watch it. He looks like a guy sliding into second who comes up about two feet short and then reaches out and touches the bag. <laughs> That's what Mike Alzot did. 
He leaped, but he came up a little short, but because he wasn't on the ground, he just reaches the ball in, across the plane, and it's six. Well, Couch and the Browns start deep at their own 10. Give it to William Green. And Green meets a crowd of Buccaneers spearheaded by Shelton Quarles and Greg Spires. This Tampa Bay defense has scored four touchdowns this year and have allowed only four touchdowns. And that makes John Gruden very happy. And of course, I think everybody's well aware of the fact that Tampa Bay paid dearly to get John away from Al Davis and the Raiders and the buzz in the West Coast here. They're more than happy. The West Coast of They're Florida. They're happy in the West Coast of California, too. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the Al Davis certainly has to be happy uh, in, in his bounty. They give this to Jamel White, and White, again, with a greeting party of Buccaneers, and Quarles has been in on almost every tackle here early. Well, the, the Buccaneers, I know, here are, are, are in Tampa Bay, but a lot of people think that it was Al Davis who was Blackbeard in this, Do you bet. in this move, two number one draft picks, two number twos, and eight million in cash for John Gruden. And I, one, that number one for Oakland this year is Philip Buchanan, who's already paying rich dividends. And I think that Al Davis would tell you right now that Bill Callahan is doing a pretty good job in Oakland with the Raiders right now. That's a lot to pay. Third and seven for Couch. Good protection. And he finds the opening and fires it to Dennis Northcutt. Northcutt who played at the University of Arizona and only 16 catches this year, but four for touchdowns. Well, and eight of those 16 came last week in that dramatic uh, come from behind almost win against the Baltimore Ravens. And here's Warren Sapp. They moved him out this time to go against Ryan Tucker. And you see that right there? That's called a chip block by Jamel White, where the back, before he releases, chips the defensive end, hits him with a shoulder pad, and stops his progress. That was well done by White. Couch, the quick out is complete to Quincy Morgan, and Morgan out of bounds with a catch after a gain of five. Seven nothing, the score here, Tampa Bay leads. What do you have for us, Jim Nance? All right, well, Dick, we've got an early score at Indianapolis, and here it's Peyton Manning to Marcus Pollard. The Ravens have come back to kick a field goal. 7-3, Colts first quarter. Let's go back to Tampa. All right, Jim, as the Cleveland Browns, it's been a bizarre season from the very first game. You can make a case for them being 5-0. Two and three is the reality of it all. On the reverse, Morgan skips out of a tackle and then is drilled by Shelton Quarles. Number 53, Quarles traversing this field, and he's the man slow getting up. And I'll tell you who else was a little slow getting up was Tim Couch, who was caught right in the middle of all that. Quarles is still on the ground, but Tim Couch is going to go out in front here and, and, and try to be a lead blocker, and he's kind of he's a little too close for the action. Tim Couch was, he was caught in that, watch, let's follow Couch as he goes across. He's going to come back in and try to throw a block. And he, down there, and he got hit again. And Tim, look at him lie there. Ooh, that's scary for the Cleveland Browns. Josh Booty is their backup quarterback with Kelly Holcomb out. Yeah, they're more than thin at that quarterback spot. Carter, he fumbles. And a scramble at the 31-yard line. And that touchdown spirit of this Buccaneer defense. He had his eyes on the goal line, and Andre Davis, with his speed, able to get him from behind. Wow, the 12th interception of the year now for Tampa Bay. What a uh, what a group this, this is. All right, let's watch this from behind. We ought to get a... Oh, this, we're going to... This is where Shelton Quarles got hurt on the play before. See him number 53 there from the left of your screen as he tries to come in. He did end up walking off the field after that hard collision. And he, of course, was not on the field for that interception by Barber. So 7 nothing in Tampa Bay with another turnover. Start at the 31 of the Browns. Brad Johnson, a pump fake. Plenty of time, throws it away. Todd Yoder was in the area. Second and 10. All right, let's go ahead and roll the all 22 here and we'll get a good look. The intended receiver, they're right in the middle is Andre Davis. 
and you can see that he's just being mauled right at the 40 yard line as with outstanding coverage and the ball goes up in the air. One more time. And the folks from Cleveland are thinking that John Lynch got there a little early on Andre Davis. But it looked like pretty good coverage by the All-Pro safety. Second and ten. This is Pittman cutting back and dropped after a one-yard gain is Earl Holmes, the ex-Pittsburgh Steeler, the biggest pickup in the offseason by the Cleveland Browns, makes the tackle. Let's check the starting lineup uh, offensively for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Here they are up front. Open a former Brown, Jenkins, Christy Coleman, and Walker returning to the starting lineup with uh, Michael Pittman, the ex-Arizona star of Mike Olstadt has the touchdown Johnson and McCardell two keys Keyshawn and Keenan and Ken Dilger the ex Colt tight end Aaron Stecker the running back the throw out of the backfield complete to Ken Dilger the tight end that's a first down inside the Cleveland 20 tackled by Corey Fuller and Brant Boyer well Ken Dilger always a big target a favorite in Indianapolis Mr. Manning and why not because after a ball is received there's what he does with it. He's not one of those fall down guys not a head for the sideline guy. Why would you when you're that big Ken Dilger is a guy that turns up field and a really good offseason free agent acquisition by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hitman and Holstein in the backfield as Johnson looks to the end zone incomplete to Keenan McCardell. Cardell who caught his 600th pass last week at Atlanta and Keyshawn Johnson his 500th career reception. Well McCardell is open the ball just oh just a tad overthrown. Keenan Mark McCardell was in motion and then ran from the slot position in a seam route right down the middle of the field and if Brad Johnson could have taken ooh, just a just a skosh off that pass that would have been a Buccaneer touchdown. Second and ten. And this is uh, Keyshawn in motion. And uh, Johnson over the middle. Complete fumble. And it's covered by Earl Little of the Cleveland Browns. They're going to call that an interception. There wasn't uh, contact or control long enough for it. But Little, nevertheless, comes up with a loose ball. That's what's really important to the Browns. And by Earl Little, his first of this year after. Tampa Bay had picked off a pass and looked to be driving for a 14 nothing early lead. Now Warren Sapp and company go to work. John Gruden said he's been with five teams but he's never seen anyone work any harder than this man Warren Sapp. Well Warren works at trying to get the crowd into the game. He did it last week in, in their game and, and right before he made a big play against Atlanta with the interception uh, the same kind of enthusiasm trying to get the crowd to be the 12th man only in Atlanta he was on the road doing it that's the kind of bravado he has no play at the 18 yard line usually the full start signal from the referee no play false start number 81 offense clinches prior to the snaps the five yard penalty remains first down well, this is being ruled an interception that Keyshawn Johnson never had complete control of the ball. You see it there, and there's the hit by Darren Hambrick. It puts a shoulder pad right on the football, and it bounces right to Earl Little, who's playing today for Robert Griffin, who's out with a shoulder injury. So Earl Little in the right place at the right time. Couch to White, and White hit immediately at the 19-yard line, a gain of six. Rondé Barber on the coverage. We talked to Jamel White, delightful young man out of South Dakota. His home is in California in Palmdale and uh, walk on in college to South Dakota. He was a uh, draft by the Seattle Mariners. He said, I never played baseball, but I had enough skills. They, they picked me for the instructional league, but then I saw how that fastball moves around a lot. I didn't like that much. I thought I better stick with football. You saw us right there at 5'9". Very proud to be a member of that 5'9 club. White finds a hole, but not enough yardage for the first down as he's stopped shy of the 25-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and about three. 
In his weekly NFL.com column, former Raiders coach Art Shell says that making a quarterback change in midseason is one of the toughest decisions a head coach has to make. Read more about it, NFL.com, or on America Online, enter keyword NFL.com. Third and four. Four wides. And then the handoff inside, and the quick hitter, Jamel White, and he's going to be close to a first down before John Lynch could come up to help out from his safety spot. Lynch playing in his 60th consecutive starting game in the NFL despite a knee injury, and when he, we talked to him two days ago, it sounded as if he wouldn't play today. Well, he was very limited in what he was able to do on Friday. He said, I just didn't move around well at all, and of course, I think anyone who follows the National Football League knows that John Lynch is one of the toughest guys back there, but it's amazing that the really, really good players just seem to have the ability to heal better than the other guys. It was the first down for the Browns. William Green powers up the middle for a hard-earned three yards. We go down to Bonnie Bernstein. All right, an update on Bucks middle linebacker Shelton Quarles. He got the wind knocked out of him. He is probable to return, Dick. They're just giving him some time to kind of get his wits about him. Somebody they definitely want him back in the lineup. He's made a nice transition moving from the strong side to middle linebacker coming into today, leading the Bucks in tackles. He moved from outside uh, to uh, inside when Jamie Duncan uh, left the Buccaneers as a free agent. Bit dazed by that was a spirited tackle. He off to a great start in this opening quarter. Second down, and William Green again, and uh, he just can't get anything more than two or three yards uh, crack. Although they're hoping with his speed and power that he'll be able to break one loose. Well, he's really the guy that predominantly has been doing the hammering away between the tackles, and it's it's a, consor a consortium of things, Dick. It's, it's not just William Green. Uh, there's a prime example that the blocking wasn't there. One time before on one of his carries, he was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Running the football is a team effort. Unfortunately, too many times he gets dropped on the doorstep of the running back solely. Yeah, well said. Third down and five. Four wide receivers. Couch way off the mark, and well, he should be as John Lynch had his eyes on an interception. Now the Bucks defense has allowed just four touchdowns in 66 opponent drives this year. That's how smothering this defense has been. They'll get the ball back with less than a minute remaining in this opening quarter. Carl Williams stands at the 25. Chris Gardaki had a beautiful punt the last time, but it went into the end zone. Another spiral that Williams backs up to the 16. 25 and tackled at the 29. And without a timeout, the 64 yards, and that set up Mike Olstad's one yard touchdown plunge. That's the scoring. 36 seconds left in this quarter. Olstad in motion. Kipton behind that block and wrestled down by Dwayne Rudd. Well, Gerard uh, Warren in the middle of that defensive line for the Cleveland Browns, uh, number one pick of the Browns last year out of the University of Florida. And it's always fun when you talk to these players, uh, Dan, and a great young player says, oh, my idol, I'm in the same field with Warren Sapp. I, that's what I want to be someday. No, you do like to rub shoulders with guys who really admire the men that came before. And you're right, Gerard Warren, he said, I, he's everything I'd like to be. He's one of the many Floridians. Eight of the 11 Cleveland starters played their high school football in Florida. Will return to... 7 nothing Tampa Bay leading Cleveland here at Raymond James Stadium. Well, big second quarter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Win. Now, that's, that's pretty dominant. That's pretty dominant. Of course, that last digit's going to be awfully small in any of the quarters with Tampa Bay, the way their defense has been played. Michael Pittman trapped in his backfield and dropped for a yard loss as Kennard Lang, another Floridian, played at Miami, leads the charge. Another good free agent acquisition uh, by the Browns. He uh, came over from the Washington Redskins and this 
defensive line of uh, the Browns one of their strong suits and Dick mentioned uh, here about all their starters from Florida. That's uh, actually can add to that list with the injuries Earl Little starts and he's from Miami of Florida. So eight starters uh, today plus uh, another six guys on the roster that are from Florida Florida as well. Just not started hot bread of football talent this state as Johnson has to throw it away at Pittman in the flat and was about to get hit by Courtney Brown got rid of it. Well he's got a good look initially but the pocket looks pretty secure look at Brad he's able to set up look look that's plenty of time to get rid of the football and I know that late Courtney Brown gets in there and gets the hit but normally you expect the pattern to be run and the ball to be released by that point in time. Dennis Northcutt, the dangerous return man, has a touchdown this year against Tennessee. Comes up to field it at the 30. Has an opening. One man to beat. And the kicker, Tom Tupa, was able to get a shoulder on him, slow him down until help arrived at the 42-yard line. A 39-yard kick, 28 for Northcutt on the return. So Cleveland. Finally in Tampa Bay territory, trailing by a touchdown. That's Northcutt, first down at the Tampa Bay 41. Jamel White, the running back behind Couch, who looks to throw. It's too wide. Oh, as he hit, what a timing by Rondé Barber, who flew up from the corner to make the stop, and a loss of about five yards. What can you say other than perfect? That's that's exactly the way a corner is supposed to come up and meet the play. A textbook shoulder tackle. And Jamel White did a pretty fine job of holding on to the football. That's that's one of those tackles and hits where more often than not the receiver is separated from the football by the hit. Four yards on the loss second and 14 shotgun couch. Screen and it's to White. Boy, the Buccaneers just react so well this time. Dwight Smith, an extra defensive back in his second year out of Akron, makes the stop. Well, college ball next Saturday and starts with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman. They kick off the action with the Olympus College football today, and then the old Miss Rebels take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. For more, go to CBS Sportsline.com, America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Monty Kiffin, the coordinator, and Tony Dungy, the former head coach, built this defense on speed. And boy, have we seen plenty of examples of that already. Third and 13, couch underneath with a flag down, complete to Jamel White. And White dumped at the 36-yard line, five yards shy of a first down. Uh, and that'll be a matter of how does Tampa Bay deal with the penalty? They Oh, it goes the other way against the Buccaneers. Oh, and this will give the Browns a first down. That's one of those defensive linemen charging and using their hand up in the face of the blocker. Illegal use of the hands to the face. Number 90 defense. It's a five yard penalty. It's an automatic first down. See, that's one of those penalties that even though it's a five yarder, that would not have come anywhere close to giving the Browns a first down, but it's an automatic first down. Right in the middle of the screen, what, let's watch the helmet go back. Yep, right there, you can see right there where Gurley gets his hands up underneath the helmet and forces it back. Only gets to play a couple plays a game in a pass rush situation. And boy, you hate wait, to make wait, a mistake wait, of that wait. magnitude that keeps the drive alive for the opposition. Actually, the penalty is shorter distance than the play, but the penalty right. gets the first down. The first down is what matters. You bet, at the 39-yard line. And Couch rolling to throw, buying some time to go long. Up for grabs, incomplete on the goal line. John Lynch there to help bat it away from Kevin Johnson. He's thrown into double coverage, and that was a matter of two trying to get it from one. Well, maybe if that one guy is somebody like a Randy Moss, but Kevin Johnson at 5'11", having to outjump two Tampa Bay defenders for the football, that's asking an awful lot. And that was a very risky throw by Tim Couch. You don't mind if you've got a tremendous leaper going one on one then you hope your guy is the one that goes up to get the football but in the middle of the field against two defenders risky. Jamel White and he just can't get around.
around the corner as a flag goes down in the secondary. Tackle made by Dwight Smith. Here's a budding uh, defensive back Smith. They really like him a third round pick a year ago. Good ball hawk had a couple of interceptions against Atlanta as a nickel back last week. Well we've seen in this game so far that Tampa Bay has the lead because of a Cleveland missed tackle and we have seen the effects of good tackling on the other side Tampa Bay just couldn't be tackling any better shot block is the call against Cleveland or crack back personal foul crack back number 85 offense that's a 15 yard penalty for Maine second down if you're split from the formation more than two yards, you cannot come back in and make a block. Let's watch. Jerry comes into the picture right now, number 85, and he goes down and puts the crack black, the crack back rather, on Dexter Jackson. Once you're separated more than two yards from that tackle to tackle formation, you cannot come back inside and do that. And a huge penalty, 15 yards, second and 25. Couch underneath, incomplete. Oh! Intercepted by Sheldon Quarles, who's back in the lineup defensively for Tampa Bay. Jamel White, the intended receiver. Number 53, Sheldon Quarles on the ground. They're trying to get a, just a little bit of the yardage back, but the ball thrown way behind Jamel White. He was lucky to even get a finger on it, and then Cleveland was lucky it wasn't intercepted. But somehow White wasn't anywhere near where Couch expected or vice versa. I'm not sure which. But that ball completely uncatchable. Tim Couch 6 for 11 and 40 yards passing in this first half. Quick throw underneath the White again looking for a block. He's got a lot of speed and able to drive to the 40 yard line where it would be fourth down and 11. Well that time the pocket for Tim Couch just disintegrated. And he really did well just to find Jamel White and get him the football. Just a four man Tampa Bay pass rush. Ooh. Boy does he get whacked at the very end. Simeon Rice in there. Well just remember this is a guy that had a concussion uh, last week and was forced to leave the game and luckily with that hit by Rice he really didn't bounce his head off the ground. Gardaki's punt. That won't please the Browns as he hits the end zone again. So unable to take advantage of the Northcutt punt return. It's back. Typical central and southern Florida weather. You see the Thunderheads building, and there is a threat of some showers later today. As Tampa Bay leading 7-0 starts again from the 20, and Brad Johnson to throw, looking long. And it is almost intercepted by Earl Little as he leaped in front of Keenan McCardell. Cardell and Keyshawn Johnson, the two wide receivers, without a reception thus far. Well, this time it's the Browns sitting back in the old cover, too, which means the safety has the deep outside. And how many times do we see it where the safety is late getting over there, but not that time? Earl Little just all over that throw by Barrett Johnson to, to McCardell. That, that is the way the safety is to protect the outside of the field after the corner releases the receiver. Second down, 10. Green to Pittman picks up some blocks. 30. And a first down at the 31 yard line. How about that one handed catch? He told us he loves to be a receiver. He almost prefers to get out there in the open and get the ball. Well, this is where the quarterback loves him to be a receiver as well when you make catches like this. Watch, watch this little snag, a little one handed stab of that little high pass from Brad Johnson. Shoves his blockers, get out of my way. Just single-handedly almost picks up a first down for the Buccaneers. Well, Pittman with that, that reception in the long run, 64 yards, and owns 84 of the 106 total yards for Tampa Bay today. Johnson underneath, and no one there. Mike Allstott was the closest 
white jersey. Bonnie, what do you have for us? Well, Dick, we've gotten a good look at Michael Pittman today. Remember on that touchdown drive, he had that huge catch and run, but after five years in Arizona, he said he's still trying to get a handle on what he considers the hardest offense he's ever had to learn. He said there's so much shifting, so much motion before the snap. He's like, sometimes I feel if I don't study, I'm going to get into trouble because the last thing I want to do is mess up and be the one who has to face John Gruden on the sideline. <laughs> That's a fear of all of these Buccaneers. Brad Johnson confirmed that. He said, it's a long study day. Gruden with all the window dressing shifts and formations. And this is Aaron Stecker. And Stecker out across the 35 to the 40, a gain of almost nine. As we get other news in New York, Jim Nance. All right, Dick, Cincinnati not showing up yet again as Tommy Maddox is nine out of 10 at the start. But Jerome Bettis is the big story. Two touchdown runs, including this one a minute ago from 41 yards out at 17 nothing Pittsburgh. Let's go back to Dick and Dan. Yeah, the bus just won't stop in you know, Cincinnati. Every time I think the bus is, uh, his tires have gone bald, <laughs> all of a sudden you see a run like that. Johnson with a long handoff and breaking tackles is Aaron Stecker, the third year runner from Western Illinois, an undrafted free agent a couple years ago by Chicago. Yeah, that's just second effort. That's just getting hit and you refuse to go down. Behind the line of scrimmage, you're hit once, and then you keep fighting, you're hit again, you spin off, you dig for a couple more. And right now, that, that's the look of a guy who wants it. That's an old football, just, you know, from the first day you walk on a football field, the coach challenges you, who wants it? Who wants it? Well, that's that's wanting it right there. And he got it the first down with that second effort and third effort. Keyshawn in motion on first down at the 41. Out of the backfield. The tight end it goes. And Ricky Dudley, who was released by the Cleveland Browns, and of course John Gruden knew him, had him as uh, his tight end at Oakland, picked him up, his first catch today. Dudley looked like he was surprised somebody was trying to tackle him. <laughs> Ricky Dudley has been an enigma his entire career. All the talent in the world, it's hard to find that much talent in one package, and yet. By and large, he's been a disappointment to, to most of the people that have tried to get him to find and to play to his potential. And John Gruden is going to give it another shot. Yeah, I was uh, entertained by the comment Dick Vermeule made to us a couple of weeks ago. He said, in all the years, in all the years, it hasn't changed at all. Two things. You got to be patient and you got to coach him. You got to teach him. And it's just a, you know, the teachers, the coaches feel that here's a pupil. Somehow I'm going to get through to him. Well, you just, as a coach, you know that seeing that much talent in one package is rare. You don't get a chance to coach guys like that very often. Second down, the quick shot is outside, and Ken Builder has no chance to move forward as Anthony Henry, who played his college football in this town at South Florida, makes the tackle. His alma mater beating Southern Mississippi on this field last night. Tonight, after 60 minutes, Becker discovers his dream girl is turning into a nightmare. Ted Danson stars in a brand new Becker, and then from the producers of Fraser comes the new hit, Bram and Alice. It's all here tonight after 60 minutes on CBS. Third down and seven. Johnson, good protection. He's going long to Keyshawn and too long. He had a step on Devin Bush. Well, Keyshawn, I know Keyshawn is frustrated. He wishes he'd have made the reception, but at least he's getting the chance to stretch the field. He had a he had a huge reception last week, a 76-yarder and the longest of his career. And, and at least he's getting his wish. He's, he's going to try to test secondaries and be more than just the workhorse who catches five, six, seven-yard patterns underneath. Yeah, those 106 catches last year and only one touchdown yeah. tells the story. North cut again, ready to roll as they punt by Tupa. Fair catch this time, North cut at the 13-yard line. Six minutes and 39 seconds left in this opening half in Tampa, and the Buccaneers continue to lead the Browns by seven. Lance Burrow, our producer, our final Doug director. This is Dick Hanford. Welcome back to Tampa, where the Buccaneers lead 7-0, looking for their fifth consecutive win. The Browns at their own 13. William Green behind Tim Couch, and it's Green on the toss. 
Oh, boy, the speed. Now he reverses his field, has some running room. 20, and Green to the 21-yard line. Well, all right, that's, that's making something out of nothing. That's William Green at least being able to say, hey, at least I, I got some positive yardage because there's nothing over here. <laughs> Pretty good job of reversing his field. Couch gets in there and gets in the way a little bit. Brian Kelly yeah. drags him down, but again, not to the 20-yard line of uh, six yards. And I know Tim Couch is trying to do the right thing by getting out there and helping out his ball carrier, but given the state of the quarterback situation in Cleveland, he, he'd be best to stay away from any intentional contact. There will be enough of it that he can't get away from during the course of this game. Timeout's been called by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we'll take a break with senior is Mother Lucinda. Of course, Melvin Fowler, the <laughs> rookie starting. And uh, if he well, wasn't starting, they would have been in the last row. I don't know where they'd have been if he wasn't starting. They'd have been up in the light standards maybe somewhere up there. Here from Long Island, New York, to cheer their young son from Maryland, a rookie. Couch on second and four, and he has to unload as if Warren Sapp was about to plant him. <laughs> the loquacious one. Yeah, Warren uh, talking to the crowd in the end zone down there going, yeah, that's me, that's me. You see it's a corner blitz, Rondé Barber, and really coming from the defensive end position, not inside, rushing upfield is Warren Sapp. And again, you know, Sapp only got to Couch because Couch left the pocket and ran his direction. I know you ended up on top of him, Warren, but it, it's he came to you more than you went to him. Well, he's a happy man, Sapp, as Miami Hurricanes just did to beat Florida State yesterday and uh, no play, flag down and a whistle before the snap. Speaking of the all pro third down Warren Sapp five straight years uh, here he is in action. Well it's a busy life of a defensive lineman and Warren Sapp a good spin move there. Now he's out the defensive end of course the customary double team. Hustled can I get him no not quite. And again look at it. you just go one way you go the other. It's, you play till that whistle snaps and Warren Sapp as I mentioned at the top of the show maybe the most active defensive tackle in football. And third down and nine and another false start. Oh, and here's. Oh, and here's where Cleveland's offensive line needs to. If this is another false start on them, this is bad news. False start. Yeah. Number 60 offense. The five yard penalty remains third down. Your quarterback gets knocked down. And then you have back to back false starts, which puts you just closer and closer to the crowd in the end zone. So they've gone from second and four after the ad lib run by William Green to third and 14. Browns have 53 pass yards and 40 penalty yards in this opening half. And now Couch near his own end zone. Unloads underneath to Jamel White. And White to the 15. The gain of only a yard. And that's a that's a completion that Tampa Bay knew was coming. They'll just give it. They flow to the ball so quickly. No surprise that they forced the Browns to punt. And certainly that defensive sequence inspired by Warren Sapp. Carl Williams, return man for Tampa Bay. Inside is 45. Gardaki. Those two best kicks have come, but they've gone to the end zone. So they have not been productive. He needs a long one here. Left footer. Well, there was a perfect spiral. Jason Williams to the 30 after a brief bobble. Has some blockers. 45, 40, two men to beat. And down he goes at the 27. Kevin Bentley, a rookie linebacker. 43 yard return by Carl Williams. Well, this is six points. He outkicks the coverage. That was just a tremendous punt by Gardaki. But this is a touchdown right here, except for that hustle by Bentley. That's Rondé Barber with the block right there. He helps get it started. But this is a case where 
when the when the ball is caught, it, it's a good it's a good 15 yards beyond any of the coverage guys. And Carl Williams has all the time in the world to find his blocking wall. Michael Pittman on the handoff, the helmet goes flying off of Cleveland Brown, and up to make the tackle was uh, Darren Hambrick, Kennard Lang losing uh, his uh, cover. Trying to fight the block. Well, you know one thing, he lost his helmet and he just kept right on going. If he'd have had a chance, he was going to make a tackle without a helmet. <laughs> Kennard Lang right there at the bottom of your screen. Watch the helmet. It's going to come flying off right there. Does he stop? No, he's going to keep right on going. He's not going to look for his helmet until after the play. Another product of the University of Miami program, Kennard Lang. On second down, Pittman again. And he's to the 16-yard line and a first down. Hambrick down low to trip him up. Well, Hambrick ends up with a tackle, but it wasn't until another four or five yards because he actually fought through the tackle of, of, of Hambrick and Michael Pittman just showing great leg drive. Pittman is six feet tall, 215, played his college ball at Fresno State. He's a dedicated weightlifter. He, you see the biceps on him? Yes. 19 and a half inches. He loves the weight room. Well, he's been in Arizona until he got out here. He says, I can't stop sweating. Pittman again almost lost the ball on the tackle and is dropped after a one yard gain. Darren Hambrick again along with Kennard Lang. Of course, this is a big CBS doubleheader day, so stay with us. There are the three games late. Most of you will see the Raiders unbeaten. Again, St. Louis looking for their first win. That Kansas City-San Diego game, a good one. And Jacksonville at Tennessee. No one talking about the Jaguars, but they're quietly building a solid winning record this year. And can there be a bigger story in the league right now than the Rams being winless facing the Raiders? They're looking at 0-6. Johnson looking over the middle incomplete and almost picked off by Earl Holmes, the veteran middle linebacker jumping in front of Keenan McCardell. Well, Earl's been doing this for a long time, mostly in Pittsburgh, but he's just playing his middle of the field. And Carl Williams sat down, uh, McCardell rather, sat out waiting for the football, and he was a little late getting there. And that's how Williams, uh, I mean, Holmes rather, able to get back in on it. Brad Johnson, six okay, for 14 okay. with an interception. And you take away that 64 yard run after the catch by Pittman. Not much from Johnson today. Looking, looking, and lost the ball. And it's picked up by a lineman. Here to be Roman Oban picked it up and saved the recovery. Are they going to call last pass an incomplete pass? Well, if the, the ball has to come loose before the arm starts going forward, and you can see that that's just a case where the ball comes out after the arm's going forward, that is an incomplete pass all the way. Good call by the official. Martin Gramatica, who is 9 for 11 this year, as you can see, has a 52-yarder. This one much shorter will be 33 yards to give Tampa Bay a 10-point advantage. Kansas State star drills it through easily. 10 nothing uh, Tampa Bay with the lead. As we remind you, Thursday Survivor, one of the tough guys gets attacked by a sea creature. And the castaways are asked if they want to switch tribes. Don't miss an all new Survivor Thailand Thursday, 8, 7 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. Now, sea creatures come in many shapes and sizes. We're left to wonder what, uh, which one got them. Yeah, you know, that's why I like my water in the bathtub. And of course, 60 minutes. Is it true that people with mental problems still have no trouble getting guns? And it's true, and you'll find all about it at 60 Minutes tonight at 7, 6 Central on CBS. Boy, that's uh, got to be a desired place underneath that fogger. It'll a little cool air. Well, right now, the Cleveland offense here with two minutes and 41 seconds left to go in the first half is going to have a chance to try to do something, anything against this Tampa Bay defense. 
Now what you, only 85 total yards of offense for the Cleveland Browns to this point. Kick by Gramatica and Andre Davis. Tyson, academic All-America at Virginia Tech, hopes to find the right path, but cannot. He's hit at the 17-yard line by Rondé Barber. Here's a starting cornerback, a Pro Bowl talent, and he's on all the kick teams, and what a terror he is. Tiki Brothers' twin brother. Well, the Browns had first week the Dwayne Rudd throw the helmet, cost yourself the game. They should have won that one against Kansas City. Then they beat Tennessee, coming back 14 in the fourth quarter. Pittsburgh on a second field goal attempt. The Steelers beat them after they missed a field goal that would have won it. And then Baltimore last week, they were throwing in the end zone at the end of the game, rallying from deep behind, almost beat the Ravens. So Butch okay. Davis's team is that close to being perfect as Jamel White out to the 20-yard line, and I, I, you like Davis's attitude. He's a positive guy. He knows it's going to take time to build. He sees it getting better. It and it is getting better. It is. Well, what would really get better for the Browns right now, they don't necessarily need points right here, but they really need a first down to try to keep their defense off the field for the balance okay. of the first half. Even if they don't score, don't give Tampa a chance to score. They'll just uh, take a 10-0 and with that attitude, they let the clock run to the two-minute timeout. So two uh, the St. Louis uh, Rams and uh, the 0-5, who would have thunk it? Uh, what are your thoughts about that late game today? Well, it, it, again, they're down, and they're not even going to have their backup quarterback, Jamie Martin. I guess Mark Bulger, the third-string quarterback, is going to have to go. The Raiders have to be looking at this as a chance to just feast on the Rams. But as we know in this NFL, anything is possible. You know, this is the kind of game where the 0-5 team just shocks everyone. That'll be and our that second half. Would be a shock. <laughs> yes, Even to a St. Louis resident. Underneath. Short uh, pass to Kevin Johnson complete. And John Lynch checks that incomplete as it's uh, knocked away by John Lynch. So that brings up third down. Also stop the clock. And, of course, Tampa Bay looking for the stop here and a chance uh, with two timeouts to add to the 10 nothing lead. Browns with 58 pass yards, only 31 yards rushing against that tough, tough Buccaneer defense. And then you subtract 40 for penalties. Third and six. Quick slam, complete to Quincy Morgan. And Morgan to the 31. That is so big for Cleveland. They have all their timeouts left. Clock running 140. Remaining in the half. You play Tampa Bay, it's all about just scratching out a few points and trying to keep them from running away from you. Deflected incomplete as he tried to hit Kevin Johnson, his favorite target. Johnson, who had 84, a career high last year, and leads this year with 28. This ball from Couch just a little high and a little to the outside. And that was uh, really behind Johnson where he was he just had no chance to catch that thing. Couch is nine for 17 only 69 yards and one interception today. Yeah. Tries the middle again short yardage. Catch by Andre Davis. Shelton quarrels with the tackle. Third down and six. 12 left in the half. And down he goes. Warren Sapp has his fifth sack of the year. He leads the Buccaneers. Warren this time rushing from the defensive tackle position. Just blows around Barry Stokes, the left guard. And that's a situation where Couch does the right thing. Don't be foolish with the ball. If you got to eat it, you got to eat it. You're not the first quarterback that's ever been trampled by Warren Sapp. Tampa Bay calls time. That's a 50th straight game that Tampa Bay has logged at least one sack, the longest active streak in the NFL, 50 games in a row with a sack. And Sapp, who had only six all last year with five this season, but he'll quickly remind you, hey, I played last year on a one shoulder. I had shoulder surgery afterwards. I didn't even know if I'd be a Buccaneer. I thought they'd cast me away. Yeah, there, he was concerned that he was going to be traded, and of course the entire 
well, what would you call it? You don't want to call it a fiasco, but it was it was quite a soap Carnival. opera down here in, in trying to determine who was going to be the head coach of Tampa Bay. Was it going to be Bill Parcells? There's a host of names. Carl Williams who had a terrific kick return to set up the field goal. Waits for Gar Donkey's punt at the 26. He's covered this time. Remind you to stay tuned. The next Dell halftime report. Jim Dion, Dan, and Boomer. All the scores and highlights coming up on the next Dell halftime report. There they are. Entertaining for the hour that gets you set up for all your action on Sunday starting at noon Eastern, 9 on the West Coast. And they'll bring you up to date on all the scores as uh, start to sort things out here in this season, don't we? The, Figure out who are the teams that are going to go on and be considered as a playoff timber. This certainly is one right here, Tampa Bay. And uh, who knows about the Cleveland Browns in their division? Johnson, receivers covered, and the big quarterback carries it out to the 32 yard line and he is big they list him at 226 he's probably 20 pounds heavier than that well, huge leg if he's 226 he is the biggest 226 pounds I've ever seen Brad Johnson is a big man Burring with 22 seconds fires up the middle and it's caught Keyshawn Johnson takes it into Tampa Bay Terrace Let's stay with us now at halftime to get all the scores and highlights and uh, all the top plays of the first half of our early games today on our doubleheader day. There's Keyshawn. He just starts on the outside. It's just a simple pattern to the inside. The Browns giving a lot of room, thinking there's not enough time for the Bucks to get into scoring position. And of course, they know they're out of timeouts after taking that last one. 16 seconds, no timeouts. Johnson to the flat, complete to Pittman, who bounces out of bounds, stops the clock, and he's at the 40 yard line. 11 seconds remain. Well, what you can't do for Cleveland is give up one more of those because that will give Martin Gramatica a chance at a field goal. His longest is 55 yards. He's got a 52 yard field goal this season, so figure the 35 yard line would be the 52. That's only five more yards. Right, you'd be looking at about a 58 right now if they didn't get her. So you know they're going to run some kind of a sideline pattern. Johnson has to throw it away. So good defensive pressure, and that puts the Buccaneers in a tight jam. They have to squeeze in some yardage. No, it's got to be. No, it's got to be uh, uh, intentional grounding. He's in the pocket, and, uh, and and I think Tom White did a good job of seeing where was the receiver there. He waited yeah. a long time and said, "Wait, that that is exactly uh, uh, illegal." I think, I think that's a good call. You, you can't be in the pocket and just chuck the ball out of bounds like that. And that uh, will take uh, Tampa Bay back. That intentional grounding. The quarterback was still in the pocket. Since there's less than 10 seconds, and this requires a 10-second runoff, the first half is over. Now they run off the 10 seconds, end of the first half. You've got to have a receiver nearby. Here we're going to take a look at the Tampa Bay receivers. Let's see where they end up. That's Keyshawn at the bottom. He goes way downfield. Here's their, here is the closest receiver right here, and the ball ends up over here. And that was Brad Johnson just trying to kill the clock, throwing the football away. And if you're between the tackles, you're not allowed to do that. Good call by Tom White. Let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Dick, obviously teams struggle to score against Tampa. After watching them for half, what's your best formula for putting some points on the board? Well, I mean, obviously we've got to do a good job protecting. I think we've gotten off, when we've gotten off and, and made some good plays on first and second down and not been behind the count. When you take sacks, you get penalties and stuff, we've killed ourselves in that. Early in the ball game, we had some success mixing it up with a little bit of run and I think we just got to stay with what we're doing and just not make the penalties that we've made. Coach Davis, thanks. And so that's the end of our first half here at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida with the Buccaneers leading the Cleveland Browns 10-0. Coming up next, the next tell halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. Total offense and, and you subtract the one big play and Tampa Bay is right at 100 yards for the half. And as Butch Davis told Bonnie leaving the halftime, the penalties are unacceptable. 40 yards off the 97 gives you only 57 plus yards in the first half 
against a defense you don't expect to do an awful lot. And by holding uh, Tampa Bay to 10, Cleveland gives itself a chance here in the second half. And of course, that would be the positive approach that Butch Davis offered his team at halftime. It's just this, for Butch and his boys, though, you're down to the point now where you can't afford any mistakes. You know, now if your offense makes a mistake and Tampa Bay goes up by 17, now you're really in big trouble. Dawson's long kick is taken out by Aaron Stecker. Hit at the 20 and breaks a tackle. Oh, almost skipped out. Greg down about the 29-yard line by Brad Boyer. Let's go to Bonnie. All right, Dick. Well, I asked John Gruden the key to shutting out the Browns in the first half. He said, I thought we could put good pressure on Tim Couch. And when we played the receivers man-to-man, -man, I thought we were able to disrupt their timing offensively. Michael Pittman's 80 yards receiving. He said, well, Tampa's been playing a lot of that, or uh, Cleveland, rather, has been playing a lot of that too deep. And when they do that, we'll throw the ball to Michael between the linebackers. And as long as they keep doing that, so will we. Love that expression of that raised eyebrow and those pursed lips of Gruden. Tense. Give it inside to Pittman for two or three. Earl Holmes and others for the tackle. John Gruden's concession, though, to the sun here in Florida is to wear that visor uh, all the way through practice and during games and whatnot. John, a fair-skinned guy when we talked to him on Friday. John, uh, John's got a tan like we've never seen before. Uh, you don't get a tan like that in Oakland. <laughs> you got a, all those freckles. You've you got to draw them together see what the picture is. Inside and Pittman is crushed by Kennard Lang and company. Darren Hambrick there as well. Lang played at uh, Washington the last five years. And the Cleveland defense, uh, I think, is just trying to set a tempo here. Maybe if they can force Tampa Bay to get a three and out, if they can get them off the field and get their offense out and give them some decent field position, maybe they can maybe they can create a, an attitude here that uh, that we can get it going on the road because it was pretty lethargic offensively for Cleveland at half number one. In this hot uh, summery day, tropical day, even the crowd not a lot of enthusiasm. And there's some noise as Keyshawn Johnson leaps up to embrace a first down at the 45. Fuller and Little in on the tackle. And in case we didn't see the signal from the officials, Keyshawn provides his own. And Keyshawn, we talked about those 106 receptions last year. He said, I just can't get beat up like that again. Well, here he is again. These are the kind of, he doesn't go down easy. So he's normally hit by two guys, and that's what he gets right here. And there's a there's a third lingering around to add a little bit more. You, when you're a big man and you catch possession re receptions, you get worked over by the defense. With McCardell in motion, Johnson flushed from the pocket. He goes down, but so does the flag, as it appeared Lang got a piece of the face mask in making the tackle of the quarterback. Boy, it's a defensive end, and there's Kennard Lang right at the left of your screen, number 96. He's really blocked very well by Walker at the line of scrimmage, and only because Johnson flies out of the pocket does he get in on the play, but you can see where he grabbed the face mask. Foul, foul. Face mask, number 96. A good 15 yard penalty. First down. It's the major penalty, 15 to the 39 of Cleveland. If you grab it, let go of it, but that grab and twist and pull him to the ground, which is what Lang did, that is the 15-yard variety because, boy, it's awfully injured, awfully easy to injure somebody when you crank their head to one side like that. So the penalties again. The Achilles of Cleveland today. Michael Pittman. And he is stuffed after a yard, maybe two yards. Gerard Warren said it feels good about coming home. He went to high school at Rayford, Florida, about 100 miles to the north of here. And Dad, uh, retired Master Sergeant in the uh, U.S. Army and a retired prison guard. So he said, when I came home, I knew it would be a disciplined situation, that there were rules, and my dad didn't bend a lot. I wonder if he started a bend when Gerard hit about 300 pounds. <laughs> a little. Johnson fires underneath. The 
Keyshawn Johnson as a Johnson to Johnson combination. Kevin Bentley, the rookie from Northwestern, he played with the Wildcats last year with uh, Napoleon Harris, the number one pick of the Oakland Raiders. So you look at Keyshawn, signal back to Brad Johnson. He first inside, then outside, but he's, he's signaling that, that he's going to run that pattern right there. They both read the Cleveland defense at the line of scrimmage, and that's where, you see, that's where being a veteran football player, communicating with another veteran, is priceless. That's good stuff. Third down, a long two. Johnson underneath the Pittman. Good work by the running back to get the first down at the 26. Well, it, it was great work to just catch the ball by Michael Pittman. The ball way behind him is, is, is Johnson under pressure, lucky to get this thing away. Warren coming up, but that ball, you know, he was expecting, Michael Pittman was expecting the ball over his outside shoulder. It came over his inside shoulder, so he had to spin back to the inside. We have seen that on a couple of occasions today where Michael Pittman has really made something happen that maybe shouldn't have. First down at the 26. First possession of the second half, and Tampa Bay on the drive, and Aaron Stecker is stuck by Gerard Warren and company. Mark Word also in on the play. Gain of a yard on the play. A big Gerard was the first guy there. And there's not much happening between the tackle. Of course, neither one of these teams was running the ball effectively coming into today's game. Tampa Bay only for 77 yards a game. See, look at that, 76.8 yards a game, 29th in the league. Look at all those rushes for a loss and not against very good defensive teams either. Nobody, one team in the top 10. Johnson has it knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Alvin McKinley. You saw Warren leave on the last play and McKinley from Mississippi, Mississippi State replaced him. That's what you do. You can't get to the quarterback. And Brad Johnson went even went over the very top with that ball. Big six foot five quarterback. I'm sure he wasn't expecting that anybody could get up and get a hand on that. Ball at the 25. Third and nine. Pittman and Allstott in the backfield. Johnson underneath. And it's Pittman. To the 16, that's going to be close to a first down. Dalen McCutcheon, the cornerback, down low to trip him up. Real close. <laughs> you see there at the top where the marker is right on the 16-yard line. The nose of the ball appears to be on the 16. And there's the signal from Buccaneer Cove. They sound the cannons whenever in the red zone. Three shots when you make it into the red zone. That's what we just heard. There's the Buccaneer ship uh, and the uh, old Buccaneer Cove, all the concessions there. It's a uh, part of the charm here, and uh, they like that. By the nose of the football, the first down. Look at Butch Davis. <laughs> He's not the first one to have that no, reaction. No, he's not. <laughs> he's just intently looking as to whether or not that was a measurement good enough for a first down by the opposition, and he gets scared out of his wits. He said, I don't like it around here. <laughs> Expect that on the touchdown, but not for the red zone. In fact, uh, Davis and others have been so surprised by that reaction, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers press department actually put out a list of when does the cannon go off so that we might all be alerted. Apparently, he didn't get the uh, email. No, Butch did not get the email, and I think if he got, I'm not sure he'll be accepting any emails from Tampa after this. This has been one outstanding drive by the Buccaneers here to start the second half. You're, you've got a 10 nothing lead already. I talked earlier about the Cleveland defense wanting to get them off the field. This is a real killer drive by Tampa Bay. 11 plays, over six minutes consumed, and Johnson, was he outside the box? No. That's another illegal grounding. Mark Ward was the man in on his back. The rules read, you must have a, a reasonably good intention 
uh, or, or chance of completing a pass to not get called for intentional grounding if you're between the tackles if you're in the pocket and Ward has been productive for the Browns he has three sacks and a couple of forced fumbles this year out of Jacksonville State he's a product of NFL Europe another Miami high school athlete See, it's even not so much as there a receiver nearby. The rules say, do you have a reasonable expectation of completing the pass? Intentional grounding. There was no receiver in the area. The only player on Tampa Bay was number 67. That's a 10-yard penalty plus loss of down. It's third down. With no receiver and with no intention of, of completing a pass, there's the great pressure coming in right there. Mark Word all over him, and Brad Johnson just tries to save the yardage and ends up really costing his team because that's that's a loss of down penalty as well as the yardage. But with a sack, it would have been about the same and a loss of down, so maybe a couple three yards yeah. more on the penalty. So Tampa Bay, there you see, using six minutes plus already. Now the 12th play coming up. I think he's consulting with his crew to make sure that they've got the down and distance correct that it is third down and that's that's smart you don't want to lose track of a down and the Bucks need to get inside the six yard line for a first down so it's third and 19. Oh that's a hundred percent success drives of ten or more plays and this one is one of those they've scored on all nine previous. Watch out as the handoff inside and a fumble and the Browns have recovered. It's Brant Boyer, the linebacker from Arizona, who dives in on the loose ball. Still no signal, no. They're gonna say no, that uh, the Buccaneers maintain possession. They say the receiver did not have control. It's just an incomplete pass. And we've got an injured Cleveland Brown down on the field at the 28 yard line. That little shovel pass and uh, Michael Pittman uh, did not yep. have control. Yep. Bentley in there on the play. Kennard Lang is the injured Cleveland Brown and he struggles to get up. Look at it one more time from the defensive side of the ball. And the ball is out clearly, but the ruling was that Michael Pittman never had possession of it. Here, Lang got caught in the wash there. He was uh, trying to get back, and that's when the uh, incomplete pass occurred. And with a scramble, someone fell on his leg. Lang really looks to be hurting, having to support himself on the training staff getting off the field. So the field goal team out for Tampa Bay and Martin Gramatica will try a 43 yard field goal. He made good from 33 earlier. Blocked. And a loose ball. A live ball that's kicked out of bounds. Anthony that's Henry blocked it and four <laughs> flags fly. You can't yeah. kick it no, out of bounds. You can't kick it out of bounds. That will add to the Cleveland Brown field position. We'll take it out around midfield. Anthony Henry, a human ball magnet is the way Butch Davis describes uh, number 37, who had 10 interceptions in his rookie year, and he was in the block that kick of Gramatica. Well, Gramatica was afraid that one of the Cleveland Browns was going to pick it up and run for a touchdown, and that's, that, I guess that, rather than falling on the ball, he just reverted to a soccer background, and we have a plethora of yellow <laughs> on the field. Uh, that, that one didn't fool anyone. They all saw it. And Henry, with a big uh, special teams play, able to dive in from the corner and block. What they're talking about right now, I would assume, is they're trying to figure out from where to assess the penalty. Exactly where was Gramatica when he kicked the ball? Where did the ball end up? They've got, they've got some uh, some yardage housekeeping to do here to try to figure out where to put it. So 40, 33 yard line here. All right, this is where we're going to see the block. 
Right, the ball is blocked right at the line of scrimmage. It was a very low kick by Gramatica. And now it's at Illegal the, kick in the ball. 39 Number yard seven line. On the kicking team. That penalty is declined. Cleveland will take the result of the play. First down. Timeout. So with 8.23 left in the third, foot forward out of bounds is where Cleveland takes it. So not only is there no penalty, Gramatica is uh, rewarded for kicking the ball illegally out of bounds. And breaking out is William Green, and he was one defensive player away from making that a long gainer. So Green has had some encouraging runs in this game, a man uh, they're waiting to erupt. Ryan Kelly tripped him up after a gain of five. I guess Cleveland had no choice there, Dick, and if they would have enforced the penalty, I guess Tampa Bay would have gotten fourth down over again. Because the penalty happened during the during the course of a play on fourth down, it would have been, I guess it would have been fourth down again. So that's the only way to guarantee Cleveland getting possession of the ball. Even after a missed field goal. Yeah. yeah. And still buzzing. Pouch down the middle for the tight end. Incomplete to Mark Campbell. First one thrown to the tight end from the University of Michigan. Shelton Quarles staying with him. And when you said staying with him, Dick, we're talking about staying with him in his hip pocket. Shelton Quarles, and again, speed. Tampa Bay defense, speed. That's all we're talking about. The middle linebacker just stride for stride with that tight end. And I don't, it looked to me like if they'd have run 150 yards, he'd have still been in Campbell's hip pocket. Right, okay. Third down and five. Pocket collapses and down goes Couch. Anthony McFarland, one of those, and I think Sapp was right there shoulder to shoulder, the two inside tackles. Now this looks like we've shown up for an episode and a taping of Dance Fever. McFarland uh, puts his moves and out of the pack comes uh, Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp actually the first one to Tim Couch. McFarland was just the first one up to start celebrating. But Warren Sapp was actually the first guy to wrap up Tim Couch. Gardaki's punt, and that's off the side of his foot. A terrible kick goes out of bounds at the Tampa Bay 43-yard line. And a timeout with seven minutes. And a very light sprinkle falling now here at Raymond James Stadium. After a 24-yard punt, Tampa Bay will start from their 43-yard line. And that rain probably feels refreshing to the Cleveland defense, which has been out on the field this entire third quarter so far after that last 12 play drive by Tampa Bay. They didn't get much chance to catch your breath. Brad Johnson off play action. Looks down the middle. Has Keyshawn. And Johnson finally tackled at the 37-yard line by Dalen McCutcheon. It all starts up front. You see Dalen McCutcheon is still down on the ground, but look how they jam the Cleveland defensive line right at the line of scrimmage. Brad Johnson has a wonderful view of the field, and against the Cleveland zone, finding spots in the middle is Keyshawn Johnson. And McCutcheon, you see, making the tackle, actually gets hit by his own teammate, Ben Taylor. And McCutcheon has to leave the field. He goes you see up. that so many times, Dick, a defense player gets hurt because he got hit by another defensive player. And speaking of the defense of the Browns, Kennard Lang, we saw him limp off, uh, sprained ankle, uh, doubtful if he'll return. Well, four catches now for the rangy Keyshawn. And a first down at the 36. Michael Pittman. Big opening to the 21. 15 more. And a flag down after the tackle. Boy, that Browns defense does look weary. On a defensive side of the ball, Dick, these are the times that try men's souls. And this helps a lot as far as Cleveland is concerned. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 71, Tampa Bay. This foul occurred after the play was over. It was forced 15 yards. It'll be a first down and 10 for Tampa Bay. 
Now that's the good news for Tampa is that they'll go ahead and a dead ball foul which means they get the result of the play which gives them a first down. Kerry Jenkins called for making a late hit cleaning somebody off the pile and the NFL said this is something we're really going to crack down on this year. First and 10 at the 36. There he, watch him right in the middle. He comes flying over the pile and barely grazes Devin Bush. Ooh, that was a, uh, that's a little ticky tack there. Brad Johnson underneath, a quick hitter and complete to Kevin Keenan McCardell and Ben Taylor right there with a tackle. Well, he was called the great one and now see how Jackie Gleason took every chance and broke every rule to create one of the greatest shows of all time the honeymooners everybody loves Raymond Emmy Award winner Brad Garrett stars in the world premiere movie Gleason that's tonight at 9 8 central on CBS I love Jackie Gleason oh, oh. so did I and he of course lived here in Florida a big sports fan Michael Pittman takes a pop Keeps on driving. It's a little little in there from a safety spot to make the hit, but not until Pittman has picked up another Tampa Bay first down. Is this, you know, talking dick about for a defensive football team like the Browns right now, they're getting no help from their offense. Uh, they know that they it's a long, hot day here in southern Florida, but somehow they have got to find a way to keep Tampa Bay out of the end zone because at this point the way their offense is playing you've got to think to yourself that if it goes if the Tampa Bay team goes up by 17 you just wonder if that's not an insurmountable lead even though it doesn't sound like that much. Johnson scurries to the right throws incomplete to Aaron Stecker and going back to that last graphic you saw Pittman has outgained the entire Cleveland team with his yardage 47 on 13 carries plus 95 yards on five receptions and Kennard Lang back in despite that sore ankle was putting pressure on Johnson and B squared what do you have well Dick you mentioned Kennard Lang just went back in the game they put a splint on that sprained right ankle heavily taped him I'm surprised he's back in because he was limping very heavily on the sidelines but he's going to give it a go all right thanks Bonnie and uh, Dan McCutcheon the word is a sprained elbow for him on second and ten under pressure, he gets it off the hall stock. And Henry does a good job of dragging down the powerful 250-pound fullback of the Buccaneers. And uh, Brad Johnson did a heck of a job getting rid of that ball. Yeah, there go the three shots for the red zone. But Gerard Warren was right in his face. And Michael Allstott is just the relief guy. And, and Brad Johnson knew where to look when he had trouble. But right up the middle, Yep, there comes Gerard Warren, and he just lands right. That's a big load to land on top of Brad Johnson. Yeah, 320 yep. pounds plus. Third and a short two. Johnson goes incomplete to Allstott. <laughs> well covered by Corey Fuller. He, now, he threw that ball away. That, he sure but he did. made sure that he threw it into the ground close to somebody <laughs> on his own team. Well, a moral victory here for the Browns defense, as you pointed out. A field yep. goal keeps them uh, within two touchdowns. And Gramatica blocked on his last 43-yard attempt, made good from 33, and this one will be 34 yards. Relatively short 34 yard attempt missing left by Gramatica. So Cleveland still alive, down 10 0. They take over at the 24. William Green with the carry. Painful yard pickup. Shelton Quarles leading the way. See why CBS Monday is America's best night of television, starting with The King of Queens, followed by Yes, Dear, Everybody Loves Raymond, and the number one new comedy of the season, Still Standing. And don't miss TV's number one new drama, CSI Miami, plus The Late Show, David Letterman, all Monday here on CBS, America's most watched network. Browns today 
A net 38 yards total offense if you take the penalty yards away from the offense. No gain here. Jamel White stuffed Simeon Rice and Warren Sapp there. No <laughs> hole. The animated Warren Sapp. More moves than Mayflower, that guy. And more facial expression. Got a nice little wink. Got the body movement going here. He's always into the crowd. <laughs> I kind of like that move. I, I, I'm going to borrow that one. Yeah, I think he's looking at Tim Couch right there saying, you're mine. And the entire Browns offense, who they've not even broken the 100-yard barrier yet, have they? Third and nine. And here they come with a blitz, and Couch throws to Morgan and not close. Well covered by Brian Kelly. This looks like, this, this looks like boys playing against men. This defensive performance by Tampa Bay is a complete throttling of the Cleveland Browns. Coming from all angles, all different directions, and Tim Couch really did well getting that ball even close under the kind of pressure that he was under from Ellis Wims. Gardaki. High spiral, Carl Williams underneath it at the 30. 35. And all the way to the 45, a 15-yard return before Chris Akins can bring him down. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. And by KFC. There's fast food, then there's KFC. The Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense has outscored the opponent's offense this year, 26 to 20, make at 30, uh, well, no defensive touchdowns today, but they continue to throw the whitewash on the opposition. What's been the biggest surprise so far, folks, in 2002? Drew Bledsoe, Raider offense, Rams, no win, struggles for Jets, Steelers, Vikings, Titans, strength of the AFC West. Cast your vote on uh, NFL.com. Across the 50 to the 49. All stopped with six yards on first down. Stopped by Henry and Bentley. Well, they'd like, uh, he's such a popular guy here, and fans have been curious. Letters to the editor of the talk shows, why isn't Allstott getting more chances? And Gruden made that very clear. He said, people think of this guy because he went to the Pro Bowl as a fullback, as a fullback. He isn't, he's a tailback, and we've got a tailback, Bentman. They're giving him a chance here with Pittman on the sidelines, and he's taking full advantage. Like a bull, carrying tacklers to the 25, and they love it here. Well, it's not like Mike Allstott hasn't been getting a chance to play, but he is the perfect alternative to a running game that features a true tailback like Michael Pittman because Mike Allstott, you saw it right there. When given the chance to cut to the sidelines or cut to the middle of the field, he will always cut back to the middle of the field right there. I'll go back into the traffic. I'll go back into where the big boys play and I'll play with him. And that's what he's always been known for. And I think it's an excellent combination. The A train from Purdue, he gets it again against a worn down Cleveland defense and he picks up another four to the 21. Dick you look at that prolific running game of the Raiders and they offer that same kind of alternative with Charlie Garner who provides the zip and the speed and then Tyrone Wheatley the big back that pounds away inside and I think that makes for a very healthy running game and Tampa is trying to find their running game you know they they were 29th in the league coming into this game averaging only 77 yards a game that's that, that's not nearly acceptable. That's the one doubt about Tampa Bay's uh, future success going into the playoffs. Can they run it well? Well, all stop providing some answers on this drive, and he gets three yards out of uh, what should have been no gain at all. Mark Smith and others in on the tackle. Bring up third down and two as we come to the end of this third quarter. Now they are being aided by running against one of the worst run defenses in the Tampa Bay not only leading 10 nothing but deep in Cleveland territory and this is the quarter where Tampa Bay does its most damage as you look at total yards only 93 total yards for Cleveland and in this quarter Tampa Bay's outscored its opponents 47 to 7 this year. All stop looks for the first down he's looking for more how about a touchdown. Over to congratulate him, Keyshawn Johnson. 
because he made a heck of a block to spring Mike Allstock. This is just a simple hammer away at the right guard play. And like you'll see a lot of times when a defense is fatigued, there's no pursuit, no initial tackling, and Mike Allstott makes it all the way to the end zone. And why not? In the third quarter, Tampa Bay ran 24 plays to the Browns' six. That is one fatigued defensive unit on the field for Cleveland. Grammatica for the extra point. Tupas hold at 17-0. And Mike Allstott on that drive. There were five plays. Allstott, all five of the plays, all 55 yards, 17 for the touchdown. 17-0 Tampa Bay. And it's Andre Davis at the three. Here come the Browns. Davis to the 24-yard line. And with that, we'll take a break. Just underway here in the fourth quarter, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers looking for their fifth consecutive win. Have a 17-0 lead. <laughs> it appears to be Warren's world right now. He's been on a two-minute love session with the crowd, walking around, exhorting them to get on their feet and cheer, and listen how they respond to the guy. Meanwhile, the Browns have more punts than first downs in this game. Testimony to Sapp and the defenders. The quick throw and complete to the tight end, Mark Campbell. Quarles was there. Well, let's go back to the Tampa Bay touchdown. Like I said, it's just a, a simple play right off a of right guard. Mike Allstott sees nobody there. But look, there's no pursuit. And then there's the key block. Keyshawn Johnson ties up two guys. Anthony Henry primarily with a little holding, I might add, there with the left hand on the jersey. But Mike Allstock, that's just no pursuit by Cleveland and Allstock being heady and finding the end zone. There's the evidence of the Tampa Bay defense. Five first down, seven punts for Cleveland. Kevin Johnson, who's had a quiet day, has wrestled out of bounds by White Smith, an extraordinarily and strong cornerback, and he may have been a little too uh, eager with that tackle. And that's the only way Cleveland's going to get a first down in this second half is by penalty. Uh, Smith was the Mac player of the year at 10 interceptions and two touchdowns in his senior year at uh, Akron. I think the flag's going to come in for picking up the receiver and then planting him. Throwing him, <laughs> <laughs> planting him. <laughs> well said. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 20 on the defense after the play's over. Takes it out to the 42-yard line. We got bull riding and rodeo next week on CBS. And this is just uh, this isn't the eight-minute or eight-second ride. This is a bulldog. That's the old bulldog tackle. Boy, that's not really. That's I've seen a lot worse. You you heard Tom White call number 20 Rondé Barber, but that obviously was Dwight Smith number 26. Here comes the blitz. Couch rolling away from it. Gets it off out of bounds. Intended for Andre Davis. Monday on CBS, he may be the king of comedy, but when Kevin James tries out for a semi-pro football team, ouch, things could get ugly. Don't miss a hard-hitting king of queens. Monday at 8, 7 central. Pick him up and lay him down. America's most watched network, CBS. No touchdowns allowed in 11 quarters now by the Buccaneer defense. And they get that rush. And if four men, they're going to put the rush to only four. And look at the pressure. Couch dumps it out to White. And then racing back from behind the play was Buck Gurley, a young tackle from the University of Florida to make the stop. Well, they started with a hiccup against the New Orleans Saints where they gave up 26 points in their opener. But look at the last four games. Look at what they've done. The Rams put up 14. And then, of course, they're throwing goose eggs up today. 27 points allowed. And of course, Monty Kiffin deserves a lot of the credit for that. There's Monty Kiffin right there. Seven years he's been this team's defensive coordinator. And John Gruden wisely kept him on. We give this to Jamal White, and he finds an opening. Stays on his feet. Fumbles the ball. 
And it's recovered by the Browns at the 33, although they were going to call him down by contact at the 34-yard line. Although Quincy Morgan covered the ball, it was not a fumble. Well, this was this is one of the good-looking rushing plays Cleveland has run all day, one of the very few. And Jamel White just fighting for yards, fighting for yards, and yes, it appears that he was down. He still got the ball, the knees on the ground, then the ball comes out. 15 yards. Yeah, the that's the longest run of the day for by, Cleveland. By far, I would think. First down at the 34. Ouch. And the short pass to White and uh, a gain of a yard, maybe. Bonnie? You know, well, Dick, in talking about the Bucks dominating defense, think for a second how vastly different things might have been if John Gruden did what a lot of head coaches do when they come in and fire defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin and all of his other coaches. But he says, you know what? I consider Monty Kiffin one of the godfathers of coaching. I've been asking him for information for 10 years. John Lynch has said John Gruden has also had an impact on the defense. He said, we've taken on the personality of our head coach. We're playing even more aggressive. It's a great expression, the godfathers of the game, and uh, young Gruden has great respect for the old-time coaches. The throw down the sidelines intended for Kevin Johnson and Brian Kelly there to break it up, but uh, he fell awkwardly. May have been just disappointed in not picking off the pass. You know, he mentioned, uh, Dan, the godfathers of the game. He said, if I have any chance to get with Bob McKittrick or the Fritz Shermers, uh, the late Fritz, and Jim Hannafin, your old coach, he said, those are the godfathers, and I've got one right here in Kiffin. Uh, you just, I want to talk the game with them. They know. Well, John Gruden's still only 39 years old, and he realizes that I, I still have a lot to learn, and you learn from guys like Monty Kiffin. Third and nine with Kevin Johnson in motion. That makes it a triple left. And then the throw underneath. Oh, what a hit and a fumble. If it's ruled a catch, no. No, they're going to say incomplete. Kevin Johnson drilled by Dwight Smith. Brian Kelly over there as well as Rondé Barber. And I'll tell you, that Dwight Smith, he's only 5'10". He has the legs of a 230-pound man. I think I'll provide some expert analysis here. Wow. <laughs> Look at this hit. Do is he zeroed in on Johnson? Remember, this drive was kept alive because Smith was called for unnecessary roughness that gave the Browns their first first down of the second half. Well, I think he just tried to make amends right there. Phil Dawson will try a 51-yard field goal to break the string, and he gets. He's kicked one uh, 52 this year, and now 50, and that one was really that one. That was a huge kick. 17-3 in Tampa Bay with 11.45 left. It's Aaron Stecker. And he's out across the 30-yard line. Well, you want to play football in the National Football League? Well, not only, this way. <laughs> only if you want if you can withstand a hit like this. That is as big a pop as you will see in this game especially by a cornerback. That was uh, that was a hit that a middle linebacker would be proud of. And again, watch this kick by Phil Dawson. Does this just barely make it over the crossbar? I don't think so. Without the net, this is into the stands. Watch there, a stand, a fan in the first row actually gets his hand on the football. Now that, that was a 50-yarder that would have been good from 55 or 56. At least, yes. At least. Now Johnson with the lead, gets the all start running free. He rampages out to the 49. Devin Bush makes the stop. So that's six straight carries by Dawson. He had 55 in a row on the last drive and uh, picks up a first down in his first attempt here. How about Mike Allstott coming right at us? Let's take a look at it. Look at him looking for the hole. Finds a crease. I see anybody at the inside. No, I'm just going straight ahead. And then, like all great fullbacks, at the moment of impact, down come the shoulders and the helmet, and you're going to get nothing but the receiving end of an all-star hit. 9.4 yard average. Now this Browns defense is starting to look like they're out of gas. All-star again, slowed down this time. His idol was John Riggins, <laughs> and old Rigo loved to run over those defensive backs. 
Well, Mike Allstott's had a fun day today. We got that first touchdown with that, that leap that came up a little short, but he stretched it over. But look at the leg drive. That's what I love about this guy, the body lean and the leg drive. Those short legs just pump and pump, and then he gets behind Keyshawn Johnson and gets to the pylon for a touchdown. Been a good day so far, but right, they're just wearing out the Cleveland defense. Second down and nine. And it's uh, been a good rushing day thanks to Allstott. Throwing the flat and incomplete will be the call. Allstott hit by Devin Bush just as the ball arrived. Well, Monday nights and of course every weeknight it's the Late Show with David Letterman. Dave's all new special top ten from New York Giant Michael Strahan plus Deborah Messing and Pink. That's Monday night on the Late Show. Done. Now looks at third down and nine. It's even the passes are being thrown to him. David McCutcheon returns for Cleveland. Johnson gets it away at the last minute. Incomplete. Courtney Brown able to apply the pressure. The first player selected uh, two years ago, and Courtney Brown not quite yet living up to his potential. No Tampa Bay receiver anywhere in sight, but because Brad Johnson is out of the pocket, he's able to just throw that away as long as he gets it anywhere near the line of scrimmage. So we saw him called for the intentional grounding earlier in the game. That's the difference. Once you're out there, you can go ahead and chuck it as long as you get it back by the line. Tom Tupa driving kick toward Dennis North, but he'll let it go. It's going to roll into the end zone for the touchback. As you can see, light rain continues to fall here at Raymond James Stadium where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was Mike Olstad who uh, got it started. He has a couple of touchdowns. We'll show you those in a minute. The game summary showing that uh, it's been all Tampa Bay's defense. And the Buccaneers with enough offense to lead by 14. They pick up the corner blitz, and the long pass has a man open and complete to Dennis Northcutt. Northcutt uh, had a step on Dwight Smith. Yeah, here are the scoring uh, points in the game. Well, Mike Allstott started it off for Tampa by stretching the ball over the goal line. Then in the second quarter, they take a 10-0 lead with Gramatica's 33-yarder. And then they stretch it to 17 as Mike Allstott with his nifty little cut to the outside and then finally Cleveland behind Dawson's 50 yarder makes it a 14 point game but they are running out of time offensively and they better get something done quickly. Oh, Another goodness. one. Derek Brooks who has been just a superstar in this young season and Kevin Johnson he must have a bullseye on his back. They're really punishing him. Wow, Kevin Johnson, give this guy first dips on the hot tub. That is, in a span of about three minutes, that is the second giant hit oh. that he has taken. But Derek Brooks even knocked his own guy out of the way. He even sent Brian Kelly flying on that hit. Johnson stays in the game. Three wides. Third and ten. Underneath. And Jamel White spins out to the 23, far short of a first down. Brian Kelly secures the tackle, and it's three and out again for the Cleveland Browns. Dick, I have played on some offensive football teams where things just didn't go right. Things just didn't work out. And let me tell you something. When you get over to the sideline, it's tough to look your defense in the eye because you know that you're letting them down. And you look at this Browns offensive team walk off the field. They've got nothing to do but say to the defensive team, I I'm sorry, guys. We're trying. But I'm sorry. Yardaki's punt to Carl Williams, and Williams has had a couple nice returns. Unable to get loose this time, tackled at the 32 yard line by Lewis Sanders and Chris Akins. Time out in Tampa. Pillaging and plundering the Cleveland Browns. 17 3 in Tampa Bay with 8.44 left in the fourth. Mike Olson bouncing off the tackle, kicks his way free, gets his balance, drives into the open. Oh, my! 19 more. 
four for Allstock. Here comes some more expert analysis. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at him fight. It, 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 I thought he was down right there that Corey Fuller had him. Look at that effort by Mike Allstock. The entire That's city good. of Cleveland oh. had a piece of him and couldn't bring him down. What a what a show he's putting on here in the second half. Three yards shy of 100 now for Allstock. And he doesn't get it on that carry. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, tonight on CBS, there's the lineup. 60 minutes, always a must. Then Becker, then the new hit show Bram and Alice, and then Gleason. Looks like Jackie, doesn't he? He does. Six foot eight, Jackie Gleason. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're expecting to shoot the guns. They're shooting T-shirts out of there. That's what they're loading up now. Mike Allstott gets a blow on the sidelines and a standing ovation from the folks on the near side. Cleveland 52 yards rushing. Tampa Bay 160 and 97 of those to Allstott. Pittman comes back in. Flag is down as Pittman bumped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Wayne Rudd there for the stop. And uh, Tampa Bay signaling the penalty is against Cleveland. Holding. Number 94. Defense. It's a five yard penalty, which will be enforced from the end of the run. So, first down. Gerard Warren, the defensive tackle, called for holding. Now that is a rarity to see a defensive lineman called for holding when the other team is running the football. That was a pitch to Michael Pittman, and a defensive tackle is called for holding. Curious. You don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that very often. And now some members of the Cleveland defense are, you see them going in and out of the game. They're starting to cramp up. Devin Bush having a problem as he's in and out of the game. Corey Fuller now walking off the field. And the Cleveland defense really starting to pay the price for being on the field so long in such hot and humid conditions. Well, in the mid-90s, the temperature, the humidity very high, even some rain showers today. And uh, it's hard to imagine how uncomfortable it is when you're on the field constantly, helmet on, pads on, socks on. The only place to evaporate is a bare arm on the cool off. All stop. Drives forward, and I believe that'll take him right to 100 yards rushing for the afternoon. Well, that won no style points as Brad Johnson fell down coming out from under center and actually handed the ball off to Mike Allstott from his knees. This isn't the way you work on it during practice. <laughs> that takes him out, though. <laughs> well, it's very difficult for the linebackers to see the handoff when the quarterback is down on the ground handing the ball <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It could be a new look, you know? Yeah, like the old side saddle tee of Phil Dickens. <laughs> the old hidden handoff trick. On second down, all start again, and that will add to his century mark as he drives to the 29-yard line, close to another first down. And right now you're seeing Mike Allstott, wherever the initial contact takes place, he's ending up another four or five yards downfield. 13 carries, 106 yards, and this Cleveland defense right now is, uh, they are really struggling. You can just take a look at their huddle. It's hard to get them even into a huddle. These guys are so tired. All started Purdue, erased the records of Otis Armstrong. He was the Boilermakers' most valuable player three times, the first ever in that school's history, and they're playing just like this, just running through people. He's He's looking for some air himself. Yeah, he? maybe he, he might be thinking I'm spending too much time talking about how tired Cleveland is. He may be just as tired, but the winning team is never as tired as the losing team. He wanted this. He's been saying I'm not getting the rock enough. And they're giving it to him play after play, and this time everyone waiting for him. As uh, Courtney Brown finished off what Orpheus Roy started. 
I think Mike. Get Wells me out of here. Yeah, I think that was that almost looked like one of those one two three. Let's all fall down. <laughs> he just ran in there and they all fell down. Yeah, he'll get another hand yeah. from the locals here. Scored uh, the only two touchdowns of the game. 17-3 and the clock chewing down to 425. Looks like Tampa's going to let the clock run down and then take a timeout. And that is what they've done. So Allstott, who wanted to get out, and perhaps they uh, figured to uh, give him a rest, chew it down, bring on the field goal unit. And a reminder, second half of our CBS doubleheader, the Raiders endeavor to go unbeaten uh, through this week six against the Rams. Can the Rams win one at home? Kansas City and San Diego. That rivalry in the AFC West should be a good one. And Jacksonville, Tennessee, the same. Check your local listings, but just stay right here. After the game, we'll uh, either be switching you to our second game or back to New York for highlights and scores. This big CBS doubleheader Sunday. That Kansas City-San Diego game is a good one. Well, we've seen Kansas City enough to know that they're about as entertaining as it gets. They're like the old AFL days. You're right about that. Now, Tupa, Tom Tupa, once a Buckeye, now a Buccaneer. Bunks towards the corner, but can't quite hit the arms of Dwight Smith as it goes into the end zone for the touchback. 4.05 left. Browns back on the field. And then under some normal conditions and, the, and a defense not quite so omnipotent, you'd say, well, down two, you get a quick touchdown, use your timeouts, get the ball onside kick, you're not out of it. No, of course not. And they're not out of it. We've we've been around this league long enough to know that you don't you don't ever count some team out, but boy, we've seen precious few signs of life from the Browns offense today. Couch down the middle, complete. And a first down out to the 40-yard line to Dennis Northcutt. Derek Brooks in on the stop, first down at the 40. And that was one of the few times today that we've seen Tim Couch actually have time to really sit and survey the field and find somebody open. Underneath and a drop by Jamel White. I mean, Tim Couch today has really been hit and banged around. There he is actually on his own trying to make the block. It's stepped on. There he's crushed by Simeon Rice. There's Sap. Sap again. Now, this, you could almost show these same highlights week in and week out and just plug in the opposing team's quarterback. That's the, that's the way Tampa plays defense. If you're going to come in here and play them as a quarterback, you know you're going to have to send your jersey out to be clean when the game's over. Well, they generate so much pressure off a four-man defensive rush. Now they bring an extra man, the screen, and look at White. He's going to be gobbled up for a loss back at the 34-yard line. Brooks and Jackson, Dexter Jackson, in on the tackle. And that's just a that's just a case of, of, of Tampa Bay being all over that screen. They might as well have been in the huddle when the Browns were calling it. And Jamel White is injured on the play. Charming guy. He says, you know, the Priest Holmes and Marshall Falks and Charlie Garners, I, I study them. They're my size all season long to see what they do to be better. The, there's a free agent. Uh, no one really knew much about him up at South Dakota until they they had some workouts, and all of a sudden the guys looked at their clocks and said, hmm, four mm. three on grass. He four three a, in the 40. He said his first one was four two eight. <laughs> he said, I got no attention, and then all of a sudden, bang, I do that, and then everybody's gone. <laughs> Phone was ringing. <laughs> yeah, well, if we, a four three will do that. That is, uh, that, that, that's, uh, you're in uh, awful, you're on the real short list at four three. James Jackson getting some baby now, number 29 from Miami of Florida. He was their leading rusher last year. Bounce. With Simeon Rice chasing him. And finally throws it incomplete out of bounds. Andre Davis, the closest Browns target. And up comes fourth down. Boy, is that been, uh, a familiar sight on that yardstick crew? Warren 
Sap getting the fourth quarter off. Well, he's yeah, he's yelling at the guys that come on over. McFarland and Simeon and the, the other guys still have to play. Warren uh, gets to play cheerleader here. Garadaki to punt once again to Carl Williams. At the 20. Uh oh, one man to beat the punter. And Gardaki able to get a piece of him and ride him out of bounds. Inside the 35 yard line, and a flag comes down after the play. That was well played by Gardaki. He positioned himself. Just about three yards off the sideline where he was able to go ahead and make the play. Knock Williams out of bounds. And it looked as if something happened after the play was out of bounds. That, uh, in there is no foul for unnecessary roughness. The contact was as the runner was straddling the yard line on the sideline, not yet out of bounds. Therefore, the hit is legal. Well, Carl Williams takes advantage of a block by Rondé Barber right after receiving the ball. Gardaki gets him out of bounds, and then Brant Boyer, I believe, finishes him off. And Warren Sapp uh, involved in every play, whether he's in the action or not. He's showing the way to the Golden Land. You know, and when you're with Warren that's Sapp... That's not real hard to do, you know. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> well, but with Warren Sapp... It's an education to sit down and talk with him because you need a whole you get a whole new dictionary of terms. And he's got he keeps your attention. Here comes Pittman on the corner and to the 36 yard line. For example uh, just in our conversation two days ago he said uh, give me a zero that was addressed to the barber and it meant he was talking about he got his uh, dreadlocks cut off a zero is I want to shave so give me a zero is a bald head and go to the Miami Heat games and you get a wood ticket he said I'm not going unless I get a wood ticket I said a wood <laughs> ticket he said yeah that's where your feet are on the wood <laughs> on the In other words, a courtside seat <laughs> and it got my cane now that that's his uh, trash talking about his hurricanes he wants his orange and green fix and when they won yesterday against Florida State he got his cane. All stock running free with a blocker and finally ridden down from behind and a flag down. Darren Hambrick denied the touchdown at the 11-yard line. The same formula that Mike Allstott used on his touchdown run here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. If it works once, why not try it again? Start off on the right and then cut back to the left. Personal foul, face mask against Cleveland. Yeah, you know, there's that not much to grab with Allstott. I mean, it's all bulk. No, you almost have to go up from underneath to get a hold of his face mask. Now 127 yards and 15 carries, two touchdowns. He's become the offensive star of the game. Personal foul, 56, defense. That will be enforced from the end of the run. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. That's Darren Hambrick, their number 56 from behind. Oh, and he got his left hand on the face mask there at the very end of Allstott. Mike Allstott is gassed. This is the first time he's come up from his hands on his knees since he made that run. He is, look at, there he goes down again. He is, uh, he is one tired guy. Tired war horse. The jersey is out, the blood's flowing, the sweat's going, and he is whooped. He gets the ball, though. He's got enough left to get to the one-yard line as he's going for the hat trick today. One yard away from his third touchdown. Kennard Lang denied. Well, this will take us to the two-minute warning, and that'll give Mike Allstott a chance to catch his breath because he's almost there. This is the offensive huddle of the Buccaneers and Warren Sapp in the middle with Jameel Cook, two uh, 
extra blockers and Mike Allstad has 126 yards in the second half, 131 in the game. That ties his record. One yard more, he breaks his individual record and with it his third touchdown today. <laughs> you think the Browns knew who was going to get the ball? Allstad on the run. Nevertheless, well, Warren Sapp lined up at tight end and actually made a pretty good block. Well, here's Warren Sapp right there. He's lined up against Courtney Brown and look at him get underneath him and drive him back into the end zone. That was a heck of a block by Warren Sapp. That was a, that was good technique. Did you see him get, get underneath him? He's telling him about it too. Oh, what a surprise that would be. Yeah, that, what a mean, Mr. Mild mannered. <laughs> The, the picture of humility. <laughs> War he, comes, he comes into the room and when you interview him and he puts everyone on the defense. I mean, he had everything I ever did wrong in my career. He, yeah. he was ready to go after me, wasn't he? That's his. Uh, I'm not going to argue. It works for him. <laughs> he's a little too big to argue and with. He's I'll argue here. with him, but I wouldn't if I were you. He is very, very good this, at everything he does. This has been a tremendous performance today by Tampa Bay defensively. And in the second half, when the Cleveland defense was showing signs of well, not showing signs when they were fatigued to the point then here came the battering ram in the in the form of Mike Allstott and they just hammered away at Cleveland it's third and six and Michael Pittman gets the handoff and is tackled shy of the line of scrimmage so up comes fourth down and the Browns are going to call timeout as grammatic and the field goal unit comes on now here's something I really would like to do. You know, they call it the eight toughest seconds in all of sport. You can forget about skateboards and bungee cords and parachutes. Real life extreme when top bull riders risk life and limb at the Columbus Bud Light Cup. That's next Sunday on CBS Sports Spectacular. For more, go to CBSSportsLine.com. America Online keyword CBS Sports Line. Well, from Tampa, we're going to be switching you to the second half of our doubleheader, Oakland-St. Louis. Some of you go out to San Diego where the high-scoring Chiefs play the defensive line of Chargers and Jacksonville at Tennessee. Uh, Jaguars and Mark Brunel continue to play well, and with Taylor running the way he is, they've got the one-two punch alive. Grammatica, short field goal of 26 yards. B bad snap, however, and Tom Tupa goes down. So that's the one negative of the Tampa Bay performance today. They've messed up that field goal. They've had a I field goal blocked and a field goal missed. I think Tupa just dropped it. I'm not sure it was a bad snap. Well, no, it was low. It was low. It one hopped right at the, at the uh, about a foot before it got to Tom Tupa. Warren Sapp looking at it from the sidelines. Yeah, he may have his own post-game critique as well. So taking over on downs at the 17, the Cleveland Browns with 138 left. And again, they're in the negative pool. First downs to punts. Nine punts, eight first downs for Cleveland today. That's the one area where they've been able to complete passes over the middle. This one to Steve Hyden, one of the tight ends. Nate Webster made the tackle at the 29-yard line, so they match their punt total with nine. First downs. Couch underneath the north cut. North cut with great speed. Tackled by the jersey at the 48-yard line of the Buccaneers by Brian Kelly. One minute left. One timeout left for Cleveland. They'd love to end that string of no touchdowns by the defense at Tampa Bay and working against primarily uh, second unit players on that Buccaneer defense now. Well, fewest points per game. You know, you're officially ranked in the NFL by... Uh, the number one defense by the fewest yards you give up. I think you know you win or lose by points and Tampa Bay the number one defense in the league with only 10.6 points per game allowed and of course that average is coming down if they hold the Browns to three. 
Ouch to the sideline, and Kevin Johnson is out of bounds. Didn't get both feet in. And uh, Butch Davis right there to take a look with the official thought uh, that was a catch, and so did the other official. So they'll overrule. That will go as a catch to Johnson of nine yards. I couldn't quite see from that angle whether both feet were down for Johnson, but that's how the official downfield, one of the back judges, saw it. They are ruling at a completed pass. Now keep in mind, we're inside the final two minutes here, so uh, the replay official upstairs will take a look at it. This isn't a challenge by a coach. If he warrants a look, we'll have a delay while he takes a peek at it. You know, from that angle right there, tough to see. And the official is going to go with the officials and let them play football. Jamel White gets the carry inside the 35-yard line. And that's a first down for the Browns and a timeout with 39 seconds left. And that will be all for Cleveland, their final timeout. Now, this is for the Cleveland Browns, nothing more than wanting to salvage a little pride. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's to maintain a lot of pride defensively in not allowing the Browns to get a late touchdown. And, and this, this unit here, Dick, they'll, they'll fight and scrap to the last second to keep somebody out of the end zone. Oh, you've seen too many good defensive teams through the years. They they talk about this. I mean, this is, this is, this is their cause. They don't want to give up a touchdown. They don't care whether or not the game's won and they score a touchdown on the last play and you get out of here with a victory. They don't want to give up a score. Regardless of how hard Cleveland works for it, or no matter how well they execute a play, Tampa Bay would call it a cheapy touchdown, and they, they really don't want to do that. They don't want to give it up. Trying to keep it uh, 12 consecutive quarters without allowing a touchdown. That's the Tampa Bay string. Meanwhile, Cleveland looking for some positive action on that scoreboard. Jamel White, and he takes a punishing hit again. Simeon Rice over there on the tackle with Derrick Brooks. And the clock running, and no way to stop it uh, unless by an incomplete pass. Down to 20 seconds. A gain to the 25, nine seconds. Perhaps time for one play. No, I don't know if they'll, they no. might be able to spike it maybe. And they no. didn't get it off in time. And that's it here in Tampa. The Bucks, five straight wins. They're five and one at the start of the season, tying their best ever start in team history. Five and one Tampa Bay. As they defeat the Cleveland Browns 17 to 3. For Dan Deardorff, 